And this jar goes really far. For example, the stools that you're sitting on right now, we painted 13 stools with one pint. So it goes really, really far. And that was one coat. So I've added paint. I've wiped all the excess paint off of it. I don't know if people can see this. No drip marks. You don't want extra. More paint does not give you a better base coat. All that will do is add excess paint. So if it dries again with brush marks, then that second coat will also have brush marks. So you want to try to avoid that. The first coat never has a good coverage. So again, don't think that by adding more paint, you'll change the color quicker and transition. Some people think, oh, I just want to get this project over with. I'm just going to add one coat and do a heavy coat. Um, you can do that. But to get the best finish, just do one light coat. And again, it was white before, so you're not going to see a big difference. And I wish you could kind of, let me see if I can tip this here. So super light. And then I'm getting my edges. When I did my kitchen cabinetry and my bathroom cabinetry, I emptied the drawers and just pulled the drawers out. I didn't actually remove them so that it didn't take up a whole big space. Uh, and then as long as you stagger your drawers to dry, they can just dry right there in the slot still. So you want to always make sure that you go back and look at your edges. Again, you don't want any drip marks. And then big strokes left to right so that you don't have a bunch of little brush strokes. So you want to just do one thin coat again. And if you're doing a big surface area, you almost want to segment it. So um, dining room tables with a um, with like an insert to extend it. Just do like one side, then do the other side. You want to do your edges, your top, and as much as you can do bigger strokes, the better. Yeah. So that there is, I don't know, I'll bring it up to here. That's just the one thin coat. So you can see there's no drips on the edges. The, the biggest tip really is just doing the thin coat and then being able to walk away from it. Because the more you play with it, the more you try to get good coverage with it sometimes, the more brush strokes you'll create because the paint's trying to dry as you're still working with it. So, yeah, so that's just like the one coat. And if you have a dark color paint already in existing there. Yeah, so I'll show you on this green one, I'll do a white on there. So if you're transitioning from a very dark piece to a light piece, then definitely you'll probably have to add three coats. Uh, you could get away with two coats, but I think it's just best to do three thinner coats rather than over apply it. So I am going to scuff sand this one. So right now I can see I'm sanding this down and I'm starting to see white. So why I'm seeing white is because this company has done a white primer and then done the color over top of it. So you're going to want to get into the grooves. You're going to want to make sure that you get this little side edge too. And again, I can see scratch marks in this, but it's the right grip sandpaper. You can just see that it's taken the sheen off of it, right? That's the 320. Yeah, that's the 320. So you can see it's, and it will turn it white. So anything with a clear lacquer will turn white. Yep. So you'll see the discoloration of the paint. And again, that's normal with anything that's your basic cabinetry refinish from uh, any, 
any companies. When you're working on laminate, it's the same thing. You're still going to want to TSP sand, uh, and then you'll you'll get a little bit of that grit too before you add the ultra grip before you do your paint. So I'm wondering if I should just use the same color. Maybe I'll just use the same color. So again, I always do where the trim is first. It's just a habit that I got into. That way you're not getting any drip marks. Sometimes with anything that has an edge, like I said, you want to just make sure you get in the corners. That first coat is not going to look all that great. You're going to see the undercoat. You're going to think that these are brush strokes. You're just seeing the thinness of the paint with the color underneath. Yeah. So if you have this cabinet hanging in your kitchen, or even if it's like a door or a drawer, you just have to make sure that you're not competing with the side cabinets, right? Just make sure the other ones are closed while you're doing this. And I'm just gonna leave that to dry. Again, so it does not look all that great. One thin coat, and then you gotta just learn to just walk away, not fuss with it too much. <laughs> so I could work this and try to get better coverage. What, what will start to happen is that paint will actually pull away. The paint, because I'm trying to work it while it's, then it's starting to dry, then it's not going to adhere. It's just going to pull, pull away from the cabinet. So I'm only going to do half of it ish. So we can see kind of the difference. I'm going to wait for this to dry by the end. I'm going to add a second coat to this so that you can actually <laughs> look at it. There it's, we're all dry. <laughs> Oh, that's my first, that's my crappy first coat. This, um, this is one coat and I know the back is wet, but again, I want you to feel the texture after it dries. It, it's got like that high grainy kind of, it's just the paint. Yeah, it's kind of grainy, right? So a really light sand, this is where you take your foam core sanding pad. And again, you just give it a quick scuff sand. Now this has had lots of time to dry. I'm gonna sand it just a little bit more. If your paint's not dry enough and you start sanding, that you'll start to see the undercolor. It'll just start pulling away. This is where drying time is super important. So you can feel the difference. Now the bottom has been sanded. How much drying time? They say four hours. Oh, okay. Yep, they say four hours. Okay. So if you're doing a bigger project, usually by the time you get the first coat done, you could probably move on to the second coat. Sorry? You could? You totally could. Yeah, we do workshops where people bring home their projects within two hours, beginning to end. They've painted their sign and they walk home with it. And we always use blow dryers. <laughs> Fast track it with the blow dryer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So bigger projects, first coat, just let it dry. Yep, go back the next day, sand it down, and then you can do your second coat. Yep. Sometimes it's better because when you're too close to it, you think, oh, that looks like crap. I didn't do a good job. Maybe I should have done something different. So if you walk away from it, come back to it the next day, you do have a different perspective on it. Because once you start your second coat, the second coat always looks so much better. Yeah. yeah. When you don't play with it and start like, oh, I'm gonna... Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yep. Would you expect the people 
Like I said, if you're going to a light color, especially a white, they've got a color called Picket Fence, which is the whitest white. If you really want a solid white, then I say three coats. Yeah, three coats for sure. Yep. What happens if different lighting? You can kind of see casts of like, is it really finished? Is it an undercolor? Do I? So third coat just kind of avoids all that. And then if you want to distress it to sometimes see the undercolor and then like stuffing the edges more too, like what you're going for. Yeah. So I'm going to now put a second coat on this. Yeah. I have smaller bathroom with no vents, so sometimes some moisture in there. So sometimes if there's some moisture in the bathroom, being able to work with it, will the paint be okay in the bathroom? It will, but that is only if you add the finish to it. So I'll talk about the finishes that you can add over top of this after. Depending on what color you choose depends on the finish that you use. So if you're using lighter colors, you use a product called Tough Coat. Tough Coat, we're actually out of stock on it right now. I know, you're like, go get it. We're out of stock on it right now. Tough Coat is a, it's a clear, non-yellowing uh, top coat finish, which is why you use it on lighter colors because it's non-yellowing. I'm actually going to show you how to use the natural stain and finishing oil. It's an oil-based product, but you only use this on darker pigmented colors. So I'm going to show you on the black how to use this in a bathroom cabinetry. Actually, you know what? If you check under our videos, I've done a video tutorial and all these steps as well on my black cabinets for my bathroom. And it gives you the exact step-by-step -step process on how to do that. And it will be fine in an area that, in a bathroom that has no fan or I actually don't even have a window in my bathroom either. So yeah, and it's holding up really, really well. There are instances where you do not need to add a top coat. Uh, my end table, not gonna add a top coat to that. That is not something that's high traffic. It's not something that I'm putting things on every day. It's just got my lamp on it. And the paint is durable enough on its own. If you're doing a dresser, if you're doing a buffet, it, it really doesn't need a top coat. It will have enough on it. But if you wanted to add that extra durability, then you can do that extra step. Yep. So I can already see that this is starting to dry. All of their paints are a matte finish. So they don't really have a sheen on it. So this one is two coats. So you can see the difference right away of the one coat versus two coat. Now it is a different color. So it does stand out a little bit more, but what a difference, right? So it's got the sheen. I didn't do the edges, but, uh, but you get the idea. Perfect. So we will let that dry. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So in our workshop, we've done like outdoor welcome signs for your front door with this paint. No problem at all. Uh, it will hold up well. Uh, plastic patio chairs that are exposed outside take this paint to it paint like anything that's like sun damaged just revive it with fusion mineral paint it's amazing i tested it two years ago and painted my shed i was like i've got paint i wanted it a barn red i mixed a couple of colors together so you can create your own colors uh, fusion mineral paint on their website has a formula that you can use to create different colors that they don't offer which is fun and and it looks brand new. It's two years later. It's held up and it's, it's amazing. Yeah. I don't, I didn't even add a finish. I did not even add a finish. Yeah. So if you have outdoor benches, if you have decor, uh, even people have refinished like watering cans, anything that's decorative. Um, we had a customer who, painted rocks she had a rock garden 
and she used these paints. So it will totally hold up without a top coat. So that just shows you how durable it really is. Yeah. Yep. So cleaning is crucial. Yeah, especially anything that might have some mold on it, just doing your due diligence with making sure that it's clean. Sometimes um, if it's exposed to a lot of water, it will have a different finish to it. Make sure also that it's completely dry. So um, I think Spencer, Lisa, your mom was saying that there was a, a bench that was a little bit wet. You have to make sure that the wood is completely dry before you refinish it. And then you can go ahead. Uh, it would depend on what it's made out of. But if it doesn't have a high sheen to it, you don't need to add ultra grip. Yep, unless it's a super glossy, like sometimes metals have that high gloss. Um, sometimes like the watering can situation, if we've actually tried to refinish, I'm trying to think if I see one here, like those buckets that they have, the red where it's like a high sheen gloss on it, you have to do, yep, that, exactly. You have to add ultra grip to that for anything to stick to because that has the high sheen. Yeah. I know everything is paintable, right? Everything is paintable. And if you get paint on your clothes, it will not come out of your clothes either. So do be mindful of that. You can see our drop cloth that will not wash out. Yeah. Countertops. I've actually never painted a countertop a bathroom countertop. There are many people who have done it, especially the laminated countertop. You add your ultra grip, your paint, your top coat. You just have to make sure that it does cure really, really well before it starts to get a lot of water. Tiles, tiles and backsplash. Floors, it's all paintable. Yep. Yeah. It's all paintable. TSB clean, give it a little scuff sand add the ultra grip and paint away. So you can get super creative too, cause you can buy some really great Mylar stencils where it's got like the mosaic patterns on it. So you can totally revamp a bathroom to look new with the old. Yeah, if you follow Fusion Mineral Paints Facebook group, it's called Paint It Beautiful, you'll get trapped cause you'll see everybody's before and afters. Uh, gosh, like stairs and banisters and railings. And it's just, it's just amazing what you can refinish and all of the beautiful colors too. You can see, you can even search paint colors to see what people have done with that paint color to see if it's something that's similar to what you have too. Yeah. What's that? Joined. Joined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Good. Uh, okay, so where are we at now? Paint tray. This paint tray, if you're doing any really large projects. So the paint tray comes with a small roller. It's got two of the refillables. It has the rags. It has a one inch brush, which is great for picking up any drip marks. It has the foam core sandpaper. It's got two of these. And it's a great kit to have, especially if you're doing something larger, like I said, uh, kitchens, even bathroom cabinetry, you know, the side pieces. It's just super flat, no trim. That's great to fast track with the roller. The roller, um, the, the one things you do have to worry, worry about, pay attention to is when you're rolling, it's very different than wall paint. So wall paint, when you're rolling, you know, you see like the V mark on the wall and you don't need to worry about it because you know, it'll just dry and you won't see those marks anymore. With fusion mineral paint, you'll see the V. It'll dry that way. So you just have to be very careful that you're doing your passes really, really well, that there's not excess paint on the roller. Because if you see that stippling, it'll dry that way and you'll feel the texture to it. So I always tandem. So I'll go with the roller first so it fast tracks it. And then I'll just take my brush and feather it over top of it without adding any more paint to it. So then it makes the surface go flat, fast tracks because you can apply the paint really quick. So it's a great tool to have. Um, 
anything that's flat, a flat surface. So even tabletops, uh, bathroom vanities, the side walls. If you are doing tile backsplash, take your brush first to do the, the grout, and then you could just roller the tile. Yeah. Are you like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I know so many things to paint, right? Okay, so the paint tray, the paint, that's clean water. So I am going to just soak that in there. Cleaning your brushes afterwards, you want to make sure that you take good care of your brushes so that when you're doing your next project, then your brush is just as good condition as when you bought it. If you find that your paintbrush is not cleaned well, I'm sure you've seen paintbrushes where they're super stiff. You can't even flex them anymore. People who say, oh, I'm in between my project. I'm just going to put my paintbrush in the freezer. I avoid that. Take the time. Rinse out your brush. It makes all the difference in the quality of your painting. So please do that. Again, if you're waiting the next day, like Kim said, do your one coat, wait the next day. Just rinse your brush. If your brush is still a little bit wet on the day two, it's okay. You can just take your rag. Just make sure that it's just damp, that it's not waterlogged. So you can just take all the excess water out with your rags. Um, and they do have a brush cleaner as well. So maybe, Kim, if I get you just to rinse this out. So she's just going to go rinse it clear. And then I'm going to show you how I'm. you soak your brush again afterwards because even more pigment comes out of it. And then how to use the brush soap. It's like a conditioner for your hair is how I explain it. So it just keeps the bristles really nice and soft. Uh, and it lathers like a shampoo too. But I'm going to show you the top coats. So let's move this. And that is my standing one. Okay. So this is the Ikea, oops, this is the Ikea cabinet, it was originally white, painted it black. I actually did this a year and a half ago. So it holds up great. Again, I don't usually paint the inside of drawers just because it does take the extra time. And if you're snooping inside my drawers, you shouldn't be there. Yeah, you're not coming back, right? So this, I am going to take a little bit of a scuff sand to it before I put the top coat on. It's Ikea. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's all I'm going to do. Just a little bit of a scuff sand. This is natural stain and finishing oil. So this is an oil-based product. I probably should be wearing gloves for this. Ach, ach. Just doing the sample here. You want to make sure that it's stirred properly. Spencer, behind you, is there a thin piece of wood for stirring? Behind here, there. Yeah. Is there a thin... Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> look at me all prepared. Thanks, Kim. Kim's making me look like I'm prepared. So I'm just going to stir this. It looks like it has pigment to it, but it is natural. It's totally clear. So whatever color you're painting over, this will go on sheer. Now, Fusion Mineral Paint has lots of different tinted colors as well. So if you're going to just sand something down to raw wood. Um, this is an example here where we've added driftwood stain to it. And you're going to want to make sure that your wood is completely sanded down to raw wood to stain if you want a tinted stain to it. And again, on the Painted Beautiful site, there's different finishes where you can mix stains and it can look like that restoration hardware look, which is pretty cool, where you can mix like the white and the driftwood. I know. Yeah. Okay. So that's completely done. You can take a rag. I prefer a rag. They do have applicator pads too. 
the applicator pads have a foam core to it and then the outside is just a really thin just foam it so that it absolutely absorbs all of it the stain and finishing oil is a like a rub on rub off application so the less you put on again the better if you over apply this natural stain and finishing oil because you think you're getting a heavier finish or a better durability what will happen is it's just not going to dry it'll go completely tacky and then you'll wonder why is it so tacky how come it's taking so long to dry it's like i said an oil base it takes nine hours to dry normally so it's a longer drying time versus the water base which can dry very quickly as you can see we did two coats today within the hour on some of those projects um so you want to just yeah again make sure you calculate that so if you're starting a project you do the nine hours in between you can add two coats if you want extra durability just don't add two coats back to back you still have to wait the nine hour drying time otherwise you're just layering wet over wet and it's not going to give you a better finish so okay so i'm not okay i'm going to just flip it up and, and kind of do the process i better use the gloves since kim brought them for me yeah, yeah. Okay, any lint-free lint rag, cotton t-shirt, anything will work well. The applicator pad is great for like, like tabletop finishes, anything with a larger surface. And to get extra use out of it, you can just use one side and then let it dry. And then you have the other side for another project that can work, extend kind of the use. So I'm just dipping in and then rubbing it on. I did not use enough. I can see that because it's going on streaky and it's completely absorbing right into this material. And I'm rubbing it in so you, I know I'm not using any excess. If I had excess, you'd see something that was like really shiny and you'd also see drip marks. So I'll just do half of it so you can see the difference. This has a scent to it. You can smell the oil. You want to make sure that you do this in a big area that is hopefully vented. So it's super light. I don't know if you guys can see that. You can see the sheen right now. It does dry a matte finish, but it'll look like almost more of a satin finish compared to the paint with no top coat. So super easy to apply, right? And it just adds that one extra step of durability for your project. Yeah. Any questions? This is for darker colors. Yep, with darker pigment in it. Now the Ultra Grip, um, I wish I had that to showcase. That's actually a brush on process and it would be the same process as, oh, sorry, what did I say? Oh, I said Ultra Grip. It would be the same process as the Ultra Grip for the top tough coat. Yeah, less is best. You don't wanna over apply it. How are we doing? Any other questions there? We're good. So it'll dry a, a matte finish, but it will look, like I said, a, a little bit more satiny compared to the unfinished. I still call it a matte finish. Yeah, but you'll, you'll see where you haven't applied it. So it is different if you miss any spots. If you miss spots on the first coat of the, the finishing, you can just go back, add it. To, it's clear. So you can just add a second coat. You'll never know that you didn't do it properly the first time. And same thing with doing your first coat of paint. Same thing, you're gonna add a second coat, so you'll get that coverage there. Yeah. So is this something that you think that you can tackle? It's just following the step-by-step -step process and just taking the time to finish your project. So you're all gonna start collecting free furniture now, right? <laughs> Open, fresh, clean, clear, so there's not this rain. 
Okay, so I, oh yeah, if you could bring the, oh no, I have the clean one, the bring, yeah. Okay, so cleaning your brush afterwards, Kim has rinsed this. Did you, that go back in there? No. Okay. Oh, I see. I see why you did that. Oh yeah. I'm making things more difficult than they should be. Okay, the brush soap is a gel paste. So it's like, excuse me, I found it. <laughs> so it's a gel paste. You hardly need any. And again, you just lather it. And it just conditions the bristles and gets all of that pigment of color out of it. This I used, oops, see, look at making a mess again. It just lathers it. It's just like shampoo. Yep. And then you could just rinse Especially that out. Brush, you can see that that's just the conditioner there in there. Yeah, so you want to make sure all the pigment of the paint is out of your brush and then you lather it. If you ran this under underwater, you would see it just lather up a little bit more. Yeah. You can just leave that in there. Yeah, okay. yeah, I just kind of leave it for 30 and then rinse till clear, lather, and then rinse again, and then put it to dry. Yeah, yeah. So all of these things that I use today are all available in a cabinet refinishing kit. So we have kits put aside here. We've got like the tray, the sandpaper. It comes with the 20, number 20 Sal Meester brush. Uh, the brush cleaner is sold separately, but it includes two pints of paint. And it's $115. So when you think of the value of refinishing your cabinetry for that cost versus buying a brand new vanity for a bathroom or something, it's pretty incredible the before and afters you can get with just paint. So if you're looking to get like the TSP and everything, we do have them bundled already. So the hardest part of all of this is picking the color. That's the trickiest part. Fusion Mineral Paint has some beautiful paint colors to choose from. We'll put the link in the Facebook group too, our Facebook page live from today. So you'll have that to shop from too. Um, but by all means, feel free to take your time. You can browse through the store. You can ask me more questions. Uh, anything come top of mind right now? Uh, Elena asked in the live, do you know when the clear pop soap for lighter colors will be available? So I'm hoping within the next two weeks, the nice thing about adding a top coat is you don't have to do it right away. So if you do your furniture piece, you even wait a couple of months. I did my kitchen cabinetry, it's been three years and I still have not added a top coat and I've washed it. Um, it is now definitely in need of an extra uh, layer of paint, especially in the drawers that we use multiple times a day, the cutlery drawer, I'm starting to see like scratch marks on under the handles. If I had added a top coat, to it i wouldn't see that but for three years it's been like that so lots of lots of wear and tear um so that just kind of shows you the durability of it so you can finish a project and go back and do the top coat after um but i'm hoping within the next three weeks that we have it back in stock and then sarah asks how much fusion paint do you think you would need to cover a host style kitchen cabinets and she's wondering if uh, two pints. I see it depends on how many cabinets you have. Um, my kitchen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12, 14. I had like seven on the bottom, seven on the top, plus my side walls. I did not even use two pints. I chose to do my island a different color. So I added a second color. So I bought the third pint. But this paint stretches so far, you, yeah, for sure two pints should do the trick. Again, it also depends on if you're transitioning from a super light color or a dark color. So if you needed to add that third coat, you can get an extra pint. Our return policy is if it's unopened, we'll return it back. Um, so a lot of people will end up saying, yes, they'll return it. And then they just find another project <laughs> if they don't use it. But by all means, yes, uh, we have a great return policy on that if it's unopened. So if you buy more, um, buying all the paint that you need 
at the same time is super important because Fusion Mineral Paint does have different batch numbers. So you wanna make sure that all the numbers from the same color are all at the same time. So if you're buying it all at once, that's a great thing to do uh, just for consistency. Um, but I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Uh, so ask me a question about tile. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You would do a top coat. I would say you would do a top. If you're doing a tile that was in a laundry room, that was just decorative that you knew wasn't really going to get a lot of wear and tear. I would say you could leave it. Uh, if you're doing it in a bathroom, for sure, for sure, I would add a, a top coat to it for extra durability. Floors, uh, add a couple layers of top coat. Yeah, uh, you can roller it on. Again, Fusion Mineral Paint is a great resource. Their YouTube channel, you can just search in their YouTube channel any of those um, projects with those keywords and they will have a tutorial. The Paint It Beautiful site, again, uh, you'll get lots of different advice there. So you do have to be a little bit careful because there's some novices that don't necessarily know the steps that will give you their advice. So you kind of have to weed through it. And again, we're always a resource. So you can email us, you can call us. Uh, we're happy to help you with your project questions too. Yeah. Super cool. Okay. So if you think I've answered all your questions, you guys can feel free browse the store. I will be hanging around so you can ask me more questions if you have more questions. And thanks for coming today. Yeah.